Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Fort Hill United Methodist Church. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, especially after such a rainy day yesterday? I'd like to especially welcome any guests who are here today, and I invite you to fill in one of the visitor cards that's in the pew rack um, and place them in the offering plate so that we can know that you have been here worshiping with us. I am not Reverend Mark Brown. Um, Mark and Beverly are with family celebrating their grandson's birthday and enjoying his performance, not Mark's performance, the grandson's performance in The Lion King Jr. Um, so they are away, away for this weekend. We do welcome our own Mark Lowe, lay leader, to the pulpit um, to preach today. I invite you to check out the announcements that are in the bulletin. I'd like to highlight a few of those. First of all, there's been a change in the Parkview um, supper that we're serving. We're serving this week. So please note that we need um, helpers this week, this Wednesday. We need cooks, we need servers, we need a cleanup crew, we need desserts. And so you will be blessed if you participate in this. I invite you to, to check out the times and please consider helping out with the Parkview dinner this Wednesday evening. Also in your bulletin, you have a pink insert. We are gonna celebrate the baptism of Charlotte Ray Huffer next Sunday. Charlotte is the daughter of Donovan and Sarah Huffer. After worship next week, um, you're invited to join the young family in Oxford Hall for a New Beginnings celebration. If you'd like, you can bring cards or small gifts, but mostly you'll wanna meet that sweet little girl and hugs for the family. So we invite you to stay for the New Beginnings celebration next Sunday. I'd like to thank everyone who participated in the Perrymont um, teacher wish list. We had the best time on Thursday when we delivered the, all the goodies to the teachers and um, they were overwhelmed with gratitude. So thank you so much for your participation in that. Um, Scott Robertson, I think you have an announcement. Oh, there he is. Thirteen on the hit thirteen and, and volume me up a little bit. Handheld thirteen. Check. Yeah, oh yeah. Morning church. <laughs> I'm gonna come up here with Janet. So <laughs> I'm 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 here to tell you that it's that time of year again for the Super Bowl of caring. So two weeks from now, when we play the Super Bowl, we're going to have tables out there, and the two teams that are in the Super Bowl, and that'll be decided later today, right? We've got Packers <laughs> against the 49ers, and Titans versus Chiefs. And, you know, I just got to tell you, I got such a great wife, there's nothing she likes more than seeing me all comfortable on my favorite lazy boy, watching football from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. Oh, oh, hi, Kildee. I was just telling them all about the, the Super Bowl of caring where the two teams will win later today and they'll be in the Super Bowl, you know, and we put the, the tables out in the narthex and people bring a, a food item for Parkview missions. And, and the youth will be there collecting money too, so bring your money and bring your food on the Super Bowl two weeks from now. I was just telling them about that. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, I remember this too, when we get home, I gotta do dishes and we're gonna vacuum <laughs> and, and clean the closets and everything, so I was just telling them about that. Anyway, it's good to see you, honey. I'll talk to you later, okay. <laughs> Super Bowl of Carry, two weeks from today, Super Bowl Sunday. Bring your food items and be ready to put them on the table by the team you want to win the Super Bowl. It'll be a great mission project for our outreach team. And I want to thank Bonnie and Becky for leading that. Thank you. 
Now you know why we don't give Richard the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Let us worship God. Please stand. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. Let us sing. Come, Christians, join to sing.
How are you? We might need crowd control. <laughs> I think I can use these illustrations even though they're not here this morning. Last Sunday, as I sat at the Epiphany breakfast, I sat with Gabriel on one side and Madison on the other. Gabriel had just gotten a new puppy. The puppy's name is Luna. The puppy howls most of the night. <laughs> it's very sweet. It's very lovable. I found out a lot about the puppy. I found out a lot about the puppy because Gabriel was excited about the puppy, and he loved it. Madison is excited about her bearded lizard. I think that's what it is, right? Bearded dragon. We'll get it right. She's excited about that bearded dragon, and she was telling me that it eats crickets, and then it crawls up on the rock to get warm under that sun lamp. So she was very excited about it. I'm a little bit squeamish, and she was telling me that I don't need to be squeamish, but she was sharing because she was excited about that bearded dragon. In our scripture lesson today, John the Baptist is telling us about Jesus, the Lamb of God because he's excited and he wants to share. He wants to share. And that's what we're asked to do. We're asked to share. Because while a lot of times we feel like it's me and Jesus, you know, it's me and Jesus, he's mine, he's, he's just mine. Jesus is not something we can keep to ourselves. Jesus is something we must share. So today, I want you to think about your excitement for what Jesus has done for you and share him like Gabriel and Madison shared their excitement about their new buddies. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your gift of Jesus. We thank you that he came to be with us and to save us from our sins. We ask, Lord, that you help us to share this love with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first scripture lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 7. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with the, my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength, he says. It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, upward by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, 
and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. for today comes from the book of John 1, chapter 1, verses 29 through 42. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is a Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself, have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and he said, watch Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He, was a first, found his, he first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated to anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, 
You are Simon, son of John. You are called, you are to be called Cephas, which is translated to Peter. This is the word of God for the people of God. I just had an epiphany. What an interesting word for a lexicon. Epiphany. We just recently began the liturgical season of epiphany. So, what is an epiphany? From the ancient Greek epiphania, it means manifestation, striking appearance. We commonly consider it to be the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles as represented by the Magi. And as such, we typically celebrate the festival commemorating the Epiphany on January 6. During this time of Epiphany, we also commemorate the baptism of Christ as to which our scripture lesson for today alludes. An Epiphany is also defined as the manifestation of a divine or supernatural being a moment of sudden revelation or insight, the sudden and profound understanding of something. As a literary device, it is defined as a moment when a character is suddenly struck with a life-changing realization which changes the rest of the story. And often, it begins with a small, everyday occurrence or experience. So let's take a look at something that happened somewhere along these very simplified lines. 
and it probably started with a small, seemingly unimportant observation. The sun goes up, the sun goes down. The stars come out, the stars go down. The sun comes up, the sun goes down. The stars come out, the stars go down. Whoa, 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 wait a second, wait a second. That star, yep, that one over there, it didn't go down. It had yet to move. And we have these three really smart men, wise men, magi, most likely astrologers, and they observe this bright light in the sky. And perhaps they say, okay, so there are a lot of bright stars, planets, lights in the sky in the evening. What makes this one light so different? Why doesn't it move like the other planets or stars at night? It hasn't moved at all. So they wonder, what's with that light and why does it not move? Why is it still there? Now, it's sort of like how the grand openings of stores were announced way back when with the, the waving searchlight beams and our, our parents would load us all up in the car and we, we'd go to these source of the searchlight beams to see what's there. So these three magi, they're aware of the Jewish prophecy of the coming of the Messiah. Could it be? Bearing gifts traveled from afar, and we know the rest of the story. And you have to wonder how impactful that moment was when these three magi, after all that traveling, and not really knowing what this Messiah would look like, first laid their eyes on the infant Jesus and knew, they knew that there in front of them, the Messiah lay. An epiphany. In today's scripture from John, we celebrate another epiphany, one that takes place 30 years after the Magi's epiphany upon seeing the baby Jesus. We celebrate the baptism of Jesus. Gee, John had been out in the desert preaching and baptizing, telling all that would listen to repent, prepare themselves for the coming of the Messiah. Now imagine, if you can, what it was like. A stranger someone you may not have seen in almost 30 years, if ever before, your cousin. Perhaps all John and Jesus are cousins. Just walks up to you out in the desert to be baptized. John had no idea who the Messiah was until that moment he baptized Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes down, and at that moment, he has a sudden and profound understanding of something so wonderful. Whoa! My cousin is the Messiah? That's a big epiphany. Moving forward 2,000 years or so, I'm sure many of us have had our own epiphanies. If you're like me, it takes a while before it hits you. I recall one such incident that I related to a preacher friend of mine, a man I'd worked with over at Parkview Mission several years ago. I was telling him about a trip I made the week prior, coming back from DC. It was just past dusk, and I'm in the roller coaster section of 29 in Nelson County. I'm not sure many of y'all are familiar with it. As I went through a nearly blind curve, I caught view of a doe in the passing lane attempting to cross the highway. It's not one of those situations where you want to slam on your brakes and make a hard turn to miss a deer. All I could do was get off the gas and move as far as I could to the right without running off the road and into the guardrail. And Carl can tell you I did say a four letter word. <laughs> the doe remained as if frozen in the passing lane as I moved to the far right. 
As I passed a doe, I could look at the doe's face for just a moment. With her head slightly down, a look of startle met my eyes. And I drove on without incident, but with a quick prayer of thanks. My friend thought for a moment about my story, and then he told me one of two things that happened there. Mark, either a Jesus or an angel had grabbed the doe's tail and was pulling back on it, or he was in front of the doe, pushing on the doe's head, pushing it back away from me. I hadn't thought of it that way, but then it hit me, my epiphany. Something, someone, saved me from an accident. I think back to when our youth group traveled to Washington, D.C. on a Tops mission trip. Those are newer to our congregation. That's teens opposing poverty. The scripture that supported our mission trip came from Matthew chapter 25, 31 through 46. It's the story of the sheep and the goats. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. I recall how watching the youth serve those in need in the park. I was talking to myself as I tend to do. I was rattling off all the check boxes of what we had accomplished so far, feeding, clothing, praying with. And I was wondering to myself, how do we do the jail bit? You know, I was in prison and you came to visit me. I'm with a bunch of teens. As I was turning around, I saw a young man approach me. As he got closer, he inquired as to what was going on. Half suspiciously, I explained to him what was going on, what the youth were doing. He stopped. He looked at me. And then he said he had just been released from jail about half an hour earlier and asked if he could have a cup of coffee. One of the many memories I have of that mission trip is a video presentation the youth put together for you, the congregation, done to a Chris Roy song, Face of Christ. At the end of their presentation, we were left with an image of a grizzled-faced black man in stocking cap out in the cold. And the song ending, so if you find yourself in a better place, you can't look down on the frown on the other guy's face. You gotta stoop look down low, look him square in the eye, and get a funny feeling. Of course, you might be dealing with the face of Christ. Now some of us go through our lives wondering about God, Jesus, and many mentally wrestle with themselves on the understanding of the Holy Trinity. And we look around at the world all around us and all the stuff that is happening, all the news we get bombarded with, all the senseless violence, and we wonder, really? In my last sermon back in December 2018, I spoke about something I'd learned in my scuba diving training. How many people remember it? That's what I thought. When something is going wrong, stop, breathe, think. And I couldn't think, couldn't, I'm thinking about that while I was working my sermon. I, I just couldn't help but also think about that quote from Herman Wilkes, The Cain Mutiny. How many of y'all read The Cain Mutiny? Y'all missed out. It goes, when in danger or in doubt, run in circles, scream and shout. How appropriate for our world today. But then that scuba training kicks in, sometimes not as fast as it should. Stop, breathe, think. Now, Pastor Mark has undertaken to get us, Fort Hill, more actively involved in our own little corner of the world through mission. Don't worry about the other stuff. Let's focus on this little corner of the world through mission. 
to help others. More involvement in Perrymont Elementary School as a reader or even as a lunch buddy or our support for the Parkview Community Mission. What a difference we can make. One can only wonder which face that we may see will be the face of Christ. Your epiphany. Amen. Loving God, we place our offerings in these plates. We place our faith in you. We place our confidence in the Spirit's power. And we place our hope in Christ and in the ongoing work of Christ's church. Accept our gifts and our gratitude. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As we come before God in prayer, I will lift up numerous petitions, after which I will say, in your mercy, and your response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of a brand new day. We give you thanks for Fort Hill Church 
and for the freedom and privilege to worship you in this place. We give you thanks for the precious gifts of life and of Christian friendship. We give you thanks for your unfailing love and for your steadfast presence in our lives. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We give heartfelt thanks for your call on our hearts and lives, a call that compels us as a faith community to respond to the opportunity to love and serve others as you love them. We give you thanks for the opportunity to be a channel of Christ's light and love through relationships being created at Perrymont, at Parkview Community Missions, through reach and backpack ministries, by those who provide music for Carrington Nursing Home each week, and for all other opportunities to share the love of Christ in this community. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the world that its leaders might consider in all decisions what is right and what is just. That the time has come to set aside hatred, power struggles, divisiveness, and self-serving agendas. That people in all settings might grow in their ability to love others as you have loved us. That people in all settings might work toward unity and peace. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we worship, we are mindful of those who are hurting, for those affected by natural disasters, for victims of disasters inflicted by human hands, for those who are experiencing grief and sorrow, pain and illness, that physical and emotional distress and personal turmoils might be touched by your calming hand. Especially this day, we pray for the family of Max Wilmer, for Barbara Buett, for Ann Robertson, for Roscoe Sale, for Gail Phipps, and for others we name in our hearts before you now. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for your church, that its worship might honor you that its decisions and deeds would please you, and that the people within it be filled with joy, love, and courage. We pray that you would strengthen us with a faith that lifts up others, and with a bold, Christly love and compassion that we might see in others the face of Christ, so that we can participate in the process of loving, healing, hoping, and caring. This in all prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 156, I Love to Tell the Story. <laughs>
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>